Um, they were rampaged along, won their first two games. They've lost their last two, but they could have probably won both of them. Fantastic looking facility there in the deep south. I'm sure they're going to come out firing tonight. From memory, he was leading last week. Are you going to be leading this week? Or from bottom with six points and second from bottom with throw. Yes and no. Yes and no. It paid off for them. They got a two, double the four, and one six points. Depends what the teams are budget do, doesn't it? Unbiased. Miles Davis. Welcome to Unbiased with uh, Miles Davis here. It's where we go behind the scenes of, of bowls in New Zealand and find out the stories behind the people um, and the clubs um, behind the game. Joining me today, I've been really looking forward to this, actually. It's, it's a bit different from uh, the ones we normally do. Um, I'm joined now by John Quinn, who's the mental skills coach for Bowls New Zealand, amongst other responsibilities that he has. Uh, John, great for you to, to give us your time this morning. But can you tell me, when did you first become interested in, in the whole aspect of, of mental skills training? Oh, look, again, thanks for having me on. Um, Look, it was probably 15 years ago, early 2000s, I was finishing my study at university, and um, you could do kind of a mini thesis uh, as a last paper, and, and again, it was a bit of luck here. My supervisor at the time was a guy called Bob Montai. He used to do a lot of the commentary for basketball in New Zealand, and he was really into sport, and he said, why don't you do something around sports psychology um, using the counselling models? So I kind of just fell into it. Uh, I've always been passionate about sport and love sport. Um, so I kind of spent two years, a guy called Ashley Light in those days was the Academy of Sport, kind of mentored me for a couple of years and did a lot of reading and played around the space. So it kind of evolved from there. Um, started doing that and, and a lot of study, a lot of reading um, and built into it. And, and at the time I was, I was still playing a bit of cricket. So I kind of connected with kind of the guys I knew playing cricket. And, and um, so it's probably some nearly 20 years ago I kind of fell into it. And, um, you know, I've loved it ever since. I mean, I, I love sport and you get to hang around with some pretty amazing people and, and watch a lot of sports. So, pretty fortunate. So, uh, did you manage to help those basket cases that you, that you played cricket with? Um, look, that's, that's, the jury's out now that I've got time. Um, around it. Look, it's a tough space, this, because it's, um, you know, we're still not probably that great uh, around managing ourselves mentally, and that's the day to day life. I mean, we know from the wellbeing point of view, um, it's a concern in New Zealand. We're not looking after ourselves that well in, in bits and pieces, and with, the, with COVID and bits and pieces. So, for me, when we talk about mental skills, it's actually around you know life skills. How do we actually manage ourselves to turn up to work and, and turn up in our relationships and our other other things? It's not just about the sporting part to it. So look, uh, it's like anything, you know, some people really uh, work really hard in this space, uh, and some people don't. But I suppose the analogy we use it's like going to the gym. You know, if you go to the gym and, and you lift weights consistently and increase the weights, and it's uncomfortable, you get stronger. Well, the mental skills is exactly the same. It, it's an uncomfortable space to work in. Um, but you know, from my experience, athletes who are successful um, have worked out ways of doing this well and that allows them then you know whether it's sport or life to kind of manage those key moments um, how did you go about acquiring a sort of extra knowledge you know in your field presumably it's a, a, an evolving science um, do, you, do you have forums that you go to or, or lectures or, or online facilities yeah look it's a combination of both I mean I love reading um, you know I read you know 20 or 30 books a year at least, sometimes 40. So I do a lot of reading in the space because there's more information as they understand the brain more and more. Um, we're really lucky in New Zealand also. There's probably a, a group of maybe 20-odd practitioners around New Zealand from Kylie Wilson to Rod Corbin, Dave Hadfield, Gary Hermison, um, Ken Hodge, Dave Galbraith, um, Don Batiste. I mean, I could go on, Jason McKenzie. There's lots of us around who we stay in contact a lot. Um, and we talk around things and we, you know, pre-COVID, we're trying to get together once or twice a year to kind of do some peer reviews and things. And so there's a lot of knowledge out there and a lot of people are really happy to share their knowledge um, in this space. There's not really a many kind of tertiary um, institutions that run a lot around sports psychology, mental skills. So a lot of it is um, us connecting with each other and looking at what's best practice, um, what's the latest research coming out with. Um, so that's probably where a lot of our learnings come from at the moment. But obviously there's some online stuff that we will play around with and, and do different courses around. So, yeah, it's a combination of all of those. Uh, it's fascinating to find that, that it's sort of, there's a bit of a camaraderie um, amongst people in, in this sort of area um, rather than a competitive nature of, of sort of keeping the, the other one out. Look, uh, yeah, that's where I've been really lucky. Sort of 20 years ago when I got into this, you know, that's where that really evolved, that, that 
place of, um, you know, none of us got the answers to this. Um, none of us will, will link in with everyone. And we're at a point now where, you know, there's a lot of people who will say, like, you know, I'm working with this person. We're not really connecting that well. Can you pick them up? Because you might connect with them better. So there's a lot more openness around ensuring it's actually the best service for the athlete. Because, you know, some people are linking really well with and some people I won't. Um, it's not because there's something wrong with me or something wrong with them. It's just we all kind of connect with different people. So I think there's a, you know, a pretty high trust model with, with a lot of the people around New Zealand because we are in um, connection a lot of the time and talking all the time that, you know, at the end of the day, we, we want to serve the athlete. We want to give the athlete the best opportunity um, to perform with the best tools. So there's a lot more um, people being able to pick up, and especially with Zoom now. I mean, now I've got athletes, you know, not just in Christchurch, more around New Zealand because we're actually able to access them through Zoom um, and build those relationships. So it, it, it's been really good, and we've been lucky because New Zealand's small enough, we've been able to have that network of people. And, you know, I can just pick a phone up and, and say, like, you know, to any one of those people and go, look, I'm struggling with this. What are your thoughts? What have you done before? And it allows us then to gain that best practice model, which is great. Uh, why do you think mental skills training is important? Um, well, to survive life for a start, as I said, if we look at it from a, a life point of view, you know, life chucks us some challenges. There's no two ways about it. Um, and COVID shown us this, um, the shootings, the earthquakes, um, the floods recently. Um, so they're, they're not ways, we don't have to physically cope with those, we've got to mentally cope with those. Um, and for, for us, it's around that resiliency piece becomes really important. And I, I suppose the last few years, you know, that well-being piece has really become first and foremost around our athletes because making sure if they're well, they probably perform. But most of the stuff isn't taught. You know, we're still very much, <clears throat> you know, most sports are all physical model. You know, we, we would train a lot physically but we won't train a lot mentally. So it's just trying to shift that lens a wee bit, saying actually, well, yes, we do need to train physically, don't get me wrong, but we actually need to understand the brain a wee bit more and understanding for us to now that key moment. That's not a physical thing generally, it's, it's a mental thing. Um, most of the times we make mistakes as a mental thing, it's not a physical thing. You know, If you drop a ball at rugby, well, that's not because you can't catch, it's because you've lost a bit of focus. Um, and it, it, look, it's a space of... I think, you know, the Kiwis were probably historically, we've always had that should be right attitude and a bit of, you know, we don't really talk about this sort of stuff. And that's where it's shifting the last few years is people actually going, well, you know, how do, you know, the ones who struggle in this space, how do I get better at it? And the ones who are really good in this space, it's the same question, how do I get better at it? So it's slowly shifting um, the mindset. And most sports now would have um, someone working in this space, which is great. Uh, how did you get involved with bowls in New Zealand? How did that come about? Yeah, okay. it was all very lucky. Um, so this is going back to 10, I think it was, just pre-Com Games. And um, in those days, uh, it was the Academy of Sport in those days was based at, um, at QE2 in Christchurch. And David Woods was living down here, who was the, the national coach at the time. Um, and a guy called Ashley Light, who was kind of supporting me in the space around mental skills, he had been working with bowls from a high performance point of view and a mental skills point of view. And... I happened to go to the office one day and um, Ash had kind of stepped out of that role a wee bit and he introduced me to Dave and goes, look, you know, you need any help. I literally said, Dave, if you need any help in the space, let me know. And that started from there. So I worked with a couple of athletes briefly before 210 and then um, probably 210 wasn't the most successful um, games for the team and sort of came on board um, post 210 and started working with the, with the team then. So... It's a role I really enjoy because, you know, bowls is the purest form of sport because it's not paid. Um, the athletes that do this, you know, we talk about sacrifice. It's a massive sacrifice because they're away from home. Um, they've got to give up their weekends, give up their Christmases for nationals. And, and so there's a real pureness of the sport um, around what they have to do. We're, you know, in professional sport, which is great also, but, um, you know, there, there's a payment there and there's a bit more security there. So I enjoy the bowls because they're, they're just, you know, ordinary people doing extraordinary things um, and, and sacrifice a lot to do those things because it's certainly not a financial game to play bowls for New Zealand. Do you alter your or program and advice for, for each individual? Is it tailored? Yeah, look, everyone's different. It's age and stage. It depends where they sit. Um, as I said, some athletes uh, within the bowls team when I first got involved, some were really good in the space already. You know, they've done some work or they've found their way through it. Um, so often your role is just kind of supporting them in that space. And, and sometimes it's getting out of the way too because some people are actually, you know, really good. Some had never done anything in the space. So, yeah, it certainly it shifts and that's can that sometimes be the challenge, particularly with the bowls team because you're talking to sometimes a 20-year-old uh, in the same room you might have a 65-year-old. Um, so there's not many sports you can have that array, array of ages. 
um, coming through it. So look, you do sometimes have to dictate it um, and change depending who's in front of you. But the, I suppose the themes are reasonably consistent in what we try and work on with some of the athletes around it, but it's just sometimes the content might change. Uh, I'm just wondering, how receptive uh, are your clients uh, to, to this new sort of discipline, I'd imagine, for, for a lot of them? How receptive are they? And, and has it changed over the, over the 10 or so years that you've been involved, say, with Bowls New Zealand? Oh, look, definitely. I mean, I think I've been lucky with the Bowls team is that they're a good bunch of people and, you know, they want to get better. And so some see this as being a really important part of the, how to get better. Um, some don't see it as important, which is fine, basically. So generally, they're all pretty good. I mean, uh, I sit down with most of them, have some one-on-ones, um, or, or I'll encourage them in the areas to connect with a provider in the areas. So some of them have got providers in the areas, and so they will connect with them also. So look, generally, it's all pretty good. I mean, probably... Um, what's probably helped the mental skills space is post 211 World Cup. You know, Gilbert and Oak has worked with the All Blacks for, for many years, but when they got that one across the line, I think people started looking at the All Blacks as a team that now, you know, are, are starting to win the big events. And obviously, then post 215, when they won it again um, with the work of Gilbert and a guy, Kerry Evans, I think it really gave it some good um, credibility in the mental skills space. Um, so, look, most are pretty open to us. Some is a little bit unsure, and that comes back to that relationship part. If you can build a relationship with someone, um, you can start putting some of these things into it. And also making it sure it works for them because everyone's different in this space. Um, you know, and it's making sure it, it allows them to be the best they can be and it makes sense to what they're doing. So, look, generally to answer your question, I suppose the bowls seem to be really good. Um, they're pretty receptive. Um but it's just about how you then bring that into practice on a consistent basis. You alluded to this before, and I mean, I've lived here for 36 years and I've seen different aspects of it, of um, the sort of New Zealand psyche as such. Um, how, you know, how hard was it eventually to, to overcome that natural um, reluctance to open up the sort of um, low-key approach to everything? And as you said, that she'll be right attitude of, of Kiwis. Yeah, look, look, it takes time. All of this is around that relational engagement. You know, I can't go in and speak to a group for one session and change the world. You know, you go back to the gym analogy. It's the repetition of the message and how often you, you get that message. So, look, it just takes time, and that's the key thing around it. I mean, if someone is unsure in the space and not too keen in the space, you've just got to build a relationship with them. Um, and it takes time, and I think... You know, for me, where the bowlers team at time it can be a little bit easier is because there's the more mature athletes in the sense that they're a little bit older, they kind of understand themselves a wee bit more and they understand the space a wee bit more, where sometimes younger athletes don't understand it. Because, um, look, it's, it is hard. It's, it's a vulnerable space, mental skills, because you've got to be reasonably vulnerable and honest around where the areas you want to grow um, around it. So, look, as I said, most are pretty good in it, but the ones who aren't, you just got to you take your time. I mean... It does take time for people to get their heads around the space um, and also understand what it looks like for them. So, uh, you know, no one says, no, I'm not doing it. Um, it's more around what it can look like for them. And look, the Kiwi psyche, I think we're slowly challenging that way, but around it's okay to ask for help. Um, and, you know, if you struggle with your technique, um, we're pretty happy asking coaches. So if you struggle with your focus or your confidence or um, folks are managing your thoughts, we're just going to be okay with them. Um, you know, putting your hand up for that too. And I'd say, look, the Black Jacks generally are really good in this space. Um, had some great conversations, and that's why a lot of them are very successful. Yeah, it's fascinating early on, you mentioned something which I'd been thinking about uh, and wanted to ask you about, the aspect that, that it's not just the sporting side that is important in terms of this, that, that there are skills there that they can use to improve their personal lives. How much change and how much positive feedback are you getting with that aspect for them and how much do you think it's actually helping them when they go out onto onto the sporting field hey look great question um around the look at for me as i said if we look at the life skills and they can train the stuff all the time otherwise if you just wait until you have a roll up or playing well then you're only doing it two or three times a week or a little bit more so um for me it was that day-to-day stuff because i said we need to manage ourselves day-to-day not just on uh, on the green so often we talk about the ability to to be aware of you know how they're feeling what they're thinking on day-to-day stuff you know we're challenging them to put themselves in stressful um, situations off the green too because it's the, the tools you need to manage a stressful stressful situation at home or at work is the same tools you use in a stressful situation on the green so the more they can get used to that and the more they can create often we talk about the, the word awareness which is a bit of a buzz word but if they can be aware of how they feel and what they're thinking then they can do an intervention 
um, around that. So if they're aware that you know they're having some negative thoughts or they're feeling quite tight or worried, well, then you can actually do something about that. If you're not aware of it, we tend to just to, to carry on. And often, I suppose we use the analogy, you know, if you, if you hurt your ankle, you know, there's some really clear signs because there's pain. Um, but when we hurt the brain, sometimes or overwhelm the brain, we don't always pick up on those signs. So we get, as I said, we get to try and do things, day-to-day stuff of try and put themselves in situations that might cause stress or practice some of these skills. Um, I always say to people, you know, the best mental skills in the world is get married and have kids. Um, because that will challenge you more mentally than most other things ever will. And then hopefully your sport becomes the easy part. I, I, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was going to follow that up with, with ha, have you seen um, or people sort of spoken to you about how it has improved their relationships by, by applying the, the, um, the skills that you're teaching them in their own, in their own personal relationships, or in their marriages or, or, or the you know, de facto relationships, for instance, uh, and made it a better experience for them? Yeah, look, I think uh, when they get it right, it certainly does. I mean, uh, as I said, this is where everyone's individual. We, you know, if you've got an, uh, a person who has got kids and family, and you know, you know, you know, I've had kids too, so we all know what that's like. It, it, it's, it's a rewarding role, but it's a challenging role. So often we're trying to correlate the stress you feel on the bowling green to the stress you feel in life, and how can you practice those skills across the way? And it's that kind of cliche stuff, Myers, around you know, better people make better bowlers or better rugby players or crickets, we you want to talk about. And I think that is a key part. So we, we want our people to, to, to enjoy the game and live the values of the blackjacks and, you know, be really good servants of the game um, and then make New Zealand proud around it. So off the green stuff, it's just as important on the green stuff. So I'll look to always try and bring in whether it's their work environment, whether it's the home environment, what's some other areas we can practice this um, space around it, and you certainly, you certainly see some growth there. Um, you know, change is difficult. You don't, you know, you don't see someone once and they suddenly change. Okay, it goes back to that gym analogy. You don't go to the gym once and there's change. Um, it takes a long time for some of this stuff. And I just look at some of the younger athletes I work with, whether it's in bowls or other sports. It's kind of 22, 24, 25, where the, where the stuff starts to sink in because they mature a wee bit. Um, they understand themselves a wee bit more, and then they tend to be able to perform with a bit more consistency. Uh, I was, you see, you're, you're leading into my questions all the time, which is fantastic. I don't have to segue it myself. Uh, you mentioned other sports. Um, obviously, you're, you're involved uh, in you know, giving your expertise and advice to uh, other sports. I understand you've done a bit of work with the Crusaders. Uh, is that right? And how did it come about? And, and just tell us a little bit about that experience. Yeah, look, I was like, I've been involved with the Crusaders Academy for about 14 years. Um, I got involved with Matt Sexton, was was the Academy manager then. And then the last sort of five years, five seasons, I've worked with the, the Crusader team. So, um, again, just by just luck, um, got involved with the Academy, really enjoyed it. Um, and then the last, when, when Scott Robertson came in as coach, there was a bit of movement around different roles, and now I came involved um, then with the Crusaders. But, you know, any team I'm involved with, it, it's, it's kind of the same stuff. You know, it, it's it's building those relationships with the players, understanding what their needs are. And look, the needs are the same. I mean, I think I've worked with probably thousands of people now from working at a, at a school as a school counsellor to where I've, what I'm doing now in sport. Um, and look, mine's all the same. We have the same fears. We all worry about failure. We worry about judgment. We worry about what other people think about us. And it's about how do we learn to kind of manage those worries? How do we learn to understand failure as part of growth? Um, how do we learn not to worry about what other people think and some of the people that actually count are the ones we you know can focus on? So it is the same stuff as humans. We're wired pretty pretty consistently around um, what we get stuck on at times and what we don't. Uh, and athletes are no different. I mean, athletes still have the same concerns that we have day to day. The difference is, is their their appraisal is not once a year; it's um, every day, and it's quite public um, around it. So this is a bit they have to ensure that you know most of us can go to work and you know function at five out of ten sometimes for a considerable period of time, but even before anyone notices. Athletes have to perform every day um, on a consistent basis, and often with big sports um, or big events, everyone knows if you haven't performed. So it's a, it's a challenging space. I, um, as a Hurricanes fan, I, I've long blamed uh, the Crusaders and Canterbury success on satanic rituals and practices but now i know that i've got to blame it on that and john quinn so thank you very much for for letting me know where oh, to send look, the, the hate mail john look i think you can blame it on uh, probably matt sexton and aaron webb with the academy i mean they, they've brought a lot of young good players into that into that, that team and i think um if you looked at the team this year i think i can't remember the exact numbers i think it's 
maybe close to 30 players have come through the academy system. Um, and, and I know other provinces do this too, but I think the work that Matt Sexton did early on and Aaron Webb's doing now, bringing these young guys in, um, allows that team to be successful. And then you, you top it off with it, you know, four or five world-class coaches, and then chuck in four or five world-class players. Yeah, it certainly helps. Yeah, very much so. I mean, very exceedingly impressive. And I, I think it's been going on there for, as you say, for, for a fair while now. And it's a lesson to the rest of the world. How different... Um, is it dealing with, say, the Crusaders uh, the, the, with bowls? You're saying sort of, you know, that it's, it's similar, but are there different aspects within a sport that, that provide different challenges? Yeah, look, definitely. I mean, you look at some of the, the athletes, say, rowers you work with, with or, you know, runners, there, there's certainly a pain aspect for them, and where bowls, there probably isn't the pain um, aspect of it. So, and rugby, it's 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 the contact side of it in the sense of managing contact coming back from injuries where bowl was probably not as such. But the, the bit around the ability to focus becomes really important. Often we talk about attention as the currency of performance. Where does your attention need to be in this moment? Because what we know is the brain will take us everywhere else. It'll take us to the scoreboard, it'll take us to the green, the opposition, what the weather's doing. So any sport, it's an awareness of are you present in that moment or are you shifting off somewhere else? So that doesn't change any sport. Um, and, and bowls is a bit like golf and, and some, you know, maybe high jumpers or shot putters in the sense of you, you execute so that then you've got to wait. Um, and that's the key part. It's not often the moment when you bowl the bowl, it's actually what you do between the next bowl because that's when you can kind of set your next, next, you know, set your next shot up or you can actually start blowing your next shot by what you're thinking and what you're focusing on. So... A lot of that stuff's pretty similar in the sense of preparation, how they need to prepare, um, what their week looks like, um, you know, how they build confidence, how they build focus. All that stuff is the same. But as I said, some sports have different, you know, um, I suppose challenges are around a bit of that fear factor or managing pain. So if you're working with a, a mountain biker where there's a real fear factor, they make a mistake, you know, they can get injured, you know. If a bowler makes a mistake, well, the bowl goes short. Um, life goes on. So there's each sport has its uniqueness around it. But often the, the key things we want them to understand are very similar. Uh, other than Bowls New Zealand and, and the Crusaders, uh, what other sporting outfits are, are you involved with at the moment, John? Um, worked uh, with Camry Cricket for probably 14 years or so um, and probably did bits and pieces of New Zealand Cricket through the under-19 program and the winter squads. Uh, worked with New Zealand Rugby with New Zealand Secondary Schools, uh, New Zealand Under-20s. Um, Worked with New Zealand softball a wee while ago. So there's lots of different ones um, based around it. And sometimes you, you're around and it depends on the coaches who's in. If there's different coaches, they might bring someone else in. So um, I've been pretty lucky in the space to work with lots of different ones within Canterbury, you know, Canterbury golf, um, Canterbury hockey, um, around things. So, yeah, lots of different sports. And that's what I love about it. I mean, I, I love sport. So you get to actually bump up against um, – some really cool people and watch some really cool things um, and you know watching people perform um, in those key moments you know I remember you know Joe the last com games you know she's she was able to stand up with it with a considerable amount of pressure at both events um, and perform and to be able to watch them do that it's a pretty special place to get to be. Yeah, I, I can well imagine that. Uh, what about uh, corporate entities, you know, non-sporting ones? Have, uh, do people in, the, in that space seek your advice? Yeah, look, we've got, I've got a business with a couple of friends called, called Performance Wellbeing, and that's something that was last probably three or four years we started looking into it, is that business side. Cause it is the same stuff from, from leadership to, to mindset stuff um, to managing pressure because um, there's lots of businesses out there that have, have those um, – have those challenges like sport do, and some, sometimes those challenges, are, you know, there is a, um, a bit more of a, I suppose, outcome if you don't quite get it, whereas in sport, you know, you often get a chance to do it again, but some businesses you don't, or organisations. So we have worked with some surgeons, some doctors, um, some county firms, lawyers' firms, uh, but with the army, so lots of different places around supporting people with the same processes, you know, how do you manage all the white noise that is our life at the moment and all the distractions? Um, how do you manage that stuff to be able to perform in that moment? Because we know the brain will take us places that isn't always helpful. So it's certainly a space to last probably four or five years where we've started doing some work with them. Um, and, and, and it's enjoyable. It's, it's quite, it's the same, but it's different. I mean, often when you're working with athletes, they're incredibly driven. Um, they're incredibly uh, goal-driven. Every day is about getting better. Um, where sometimes in the corporate world, there's not, not always that drive. Sometimes there is, but 
you know, some people probably haven't got the goals like they used to have. Um, so it's how you can challenge them around, you know, what does getting better look like? Because um, for me and, and most of us, all of us that work in the space, we're always looking at how do we get better and what we're doing in the sense of our knowledge or our delivery or whatever we're trying to do. And that, that's, um, that can be a real challenge for some people. Obviously, uh, every bowler in New Zealand can't get hold of you. Uh, you know, there's only so much time that you've got available in a day, especially having a family as well uh, together. Yep. What, what resources are there that they could have a look at that, that you would recommend for, the, for them to start improving? Have you written any books or are there any books or online resources that oh. they could go to? Yeah, look, there's some great stuff. I mean, to be fair, that most areas in New Zealand would have a, a mental skills or a sports psychologist within the area. So um, most would have someone there. So they can go through high performance sport or Google them in the area, basically, around it. There's some really good books written by New Zealanders. One is a good book called Sporting Motivation by Ken Hodge, um, which is your real basic 101. Uh, mental skills book but it has some great real simple stuff but simple is good I mean my experience the best athletes in the world are just prepared to do the simple things longer than most of us um, because the simple things that are simple to do or easy to do are easy not to do and the top athletes tend to do those little things more consistently so that's a good book Sport, Sports Motivation by Ken Hodge um, Gary Hermison um, who's probably the, you know, the, the grandfather of sports psychology he's, he's only wrote a book called um, Going Mental in Sport um, which is worth a read, a bit more academic, but it's got some really good theories around it uh, and some good models of practice. And then you've got Dave Galbraith, who works with New Zealand Sevens. Um, it's got a book called Unleashing Greatness, um, which he, if you just Google Dave Galbraith, he's got a website. And part of the money from that book goes to a charity too. So there's three really good New Zealand books um, that you can play in this space um, around it. And look, as I said, there's so much stuff out there on Google Um around it but look ideally i think if you can find a provider in your area um and even if you can't um with zoom now there's lots of opportunities to be able to connect with someone uh, over zoom or over the phone well thank you so much in, uh, it's fascinating john I, I could talk for hours but we, we get restricted uh, by the powers that be and the amount of time i'm not allowed to talk to you. so maybe we'll have another catch up later on down the track thank you so much for your time and, and here's hoping that that in all your areas uh, apart from maybe the crusaders that there's continued success and more medals and championships coming perfect thanks for your time have a good day and they were rampage along won their first two games they've lost their last two but they could have probably won both of them. Fantastic looking facility there in the deep south. I'm sure they're going to come out fine tonight. From memory, he was leading last week. Are you going to be leading this week or? Six from bottom with six points and seven from bottom with flow. Yes and no, yes and no. It paid off for them. They got a two, double the four and one six points. Depends what the teams above you do, doesn't it? I'm Bikes, Miles Davis. <laughs>